right, funny question to start off. Uh, how many times a week do you have to say, I am not related yeah. to the great? <laughs> well, you know, being from New Orleans, playing in the swag, uh, then playing with the Oilers, it was always that question. Sometimes I would be on an interview, we might be a good minute or two in, and they're like, hey, your dad was a great guy, he is a great guy. And then I would let him finish. But my dad worked at the Superdome, and he always worked at Bayou Classic. So sometimes they would actually know my dad. So I had to kind of wait and see how the interview went. But yeah, it's, it's part of it. I'm used to it. When you first got hired, that was the first thing I looked up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, 60 days. Yeah. Uh, your first year of coaching at Alabama State. How far along are you uh, with implementing the, the stuff that you guys want to do? Like, where, where are you in that process? My thing is, a coach, you always have in the back of your mind, are we on schedule? So even if you're ahead of schedule, you're still thinking, well, what could throw us back? What could happen? So I think you always have that that, that fear that, hey, we're not there yet. But overall, we're, we're moving right where we should be. Um, we have a lot of guys on campus working out, so the physical fitness, the the mental aspect of it, which is really big with the strength coach. I think mean, that's going to be huge for us. And Coach Quinn, you know, Alabama State grad who was at South Carolina State last year, is doing a great job with just getting the kids mentally ready. And the X's and O's, you know, we have that implemented. So the good thing is a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of, you know, walkthroughs, stuff like that, where you can get the kids implemented without actually being on the field, which is where everything is going now. You don't want to have the, you know, the contact and the, the chance of injury, but you still want to have the mental reps. It's going to be a new look team. Uh, Ezra, Ezra Gray is gone. He was a big part. Uh, your quarterback room is going to look a lot yeah. different. You got a kid in there. A lot of people are excited about. A lot of expectations. Uh, your new, you know, new coaches. What what is the excitement of, of just the newness surrounding your program? Well, I think for me, the biggest thing is I have the kids are now talking about winning the championship. And I think the, the mindset has to get into, hey, every time you step out on the football field, of course you're trying to win, but the biggest thing, you're trying to piece together to be in uh, contention to win the championship. So once you have that mindset, then everything you have to do has to be at a championship level. And you know, my biggest thing to kids is you can't have championship dreams and don't have a championship work ethic. So now I'm seeing that the work ethic is matching the dream, and that's the beauty of it when everything starts to come together. So a lot of hard work still to go. But you're making progress and moving in the direction. And of course, like anything, you have setbacks. You know, some days we don't do our best. Some days the kids aren't where they're supposed to be. And so you just kind of work through those things. And you just have to keep putting those expectations in. You know, my biggest word is going to be accountability. You know, everything, players, coaches, everyone has to be accountable that you're going to do what you say you're going to do and do it at a high level. Your vision is, is stacked. Yeah. I mean, last year... I mean, from the very beginning, you know, Jackson State and FAMU and those guys, you know, fought it out to the very end. Uh, what type of challenge is, is being in the, in the SWAC East presented for you? I think it's great. It's, it's a great opportunity. Um, I don't think there'll be a team that'll probably go through the East undefeated, so that gives you always a chance. If, if you do stumble and lose the game, you still have that, that thought process in the back of your mind that, that this team that beats you probably will still lose one, so it keeps you into it. Uh, but the biggest thing, you like you say, it starts with the kids at the top. I mean, Jackson State won the, the SWAC title last year, so they're the, the team that you have to beat. But, of course, FAMU was right there. And then Bethune-Cookman is making great strides. Uh, Alabama AM and m is the classic. So, you know, Mississippi Valley, they beat us last year. So I don't think we have any teams on the East where we can say, oh, yeah, this is one that we got in the bag. So, uh, And that's what you want to have. It. I mean, in, in order to get through a, a championship run and have that type of thing, each game is going to be a big game. You have to put everything into it and, and, and have that, that knowledge of, a, hey, it's going to be hard, it's going to be tough, but that's what makes it fun. If you're going to go out there and say, hey, we're going to beat everybody by 40, it wouldn't be a very rewarding championship. So we're looking forward to it, looking forward to the challenge, and you just take it game by game. I've watched Alabama State for a lot of years now. Uh, the one thing I will say, uh, facilities, top-notch, you know, when it comes to spring Olympic sports, right. as good as any other team, it's like as soon as the football piece falls into place, I mean, you guys are king of the hill across the board. Do you have those conversations? Do you think about what what ultimate success in football would bring and uplift the university overall? Yeah, I mean, as an alumnus, I mean, I've probably watched more games than you have, I'm sure. So I think everybody's uh, has kind of seen the same thing. I mean, we've won four, maybe five Commissioner's Cups. So we've been, you know, great. You know, Coach Bean with the track team, Coach Vasquez just won the baseball championship this year. So, and I was at that game. As soon as they won, I put it into our group text, all right, who's next? And so I think right now, yeah, football 
is the one that we just can't seem to put our, our hand around on a consistent basis. So, and uh, it, it starts with having consistent teams, and then you have to start winning championships. So, to me, I don't think you go into it saying, "Hey, we want to compete. You know, we want to have a winning season." I think you have to start the other way. Yeah, we want to win a championship. Then you do everything to get you to that championship level. And if you don't get there, then you start working a little bit harder. But if you don't have that mindset of, you know, our goal at the end of the year is to win a championship, to me, it just won't happen. And, and how excited were you, you know, to come back to your alma mater, but the tools that you have, I mean, that facility, it's awesome, yep. you know, the fans, the band, the honeybee, like, everything in the fall is, is popping, there's it, it, no shortage of, of energy in the fall. Uh, what is it like to have all that at your disposal? I mean, it's great. I mean, I think, um, you know, President Ross has done a great job of putting the financial money into the, uh, into the program. Um, I mean, we've had uh, just, a, just a great time of it. I mean, and, and so now you have to go out there and produce. You know, the, the infrastructure is there. The fans are ready. Everybody's enthusiastic. You know, like you said, we have a great band. And, and the HBCU is the whole atmosphere of putting all of those different elements together that creates that game day experience. Uh, we have the Hornet Walk. So we have a whole lot of pieces to the puzzle that all look good individually. So. And that's our, our kind of whole hashtag swarm is one is to put everybody into that that one atmosphere of community that we're all moving towards the same goal. And that's to win a football championship. Now look, every HBCU has kind of a celebrity tie-in. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think two chains. You know, Alabama State for good reasons. Uh, Puffy's putting some pressure on right. people, man. <laughs> well, I think it's great. Um, and when I saw it, I, I I thought we were left out. I was like, hey, man, what about Alabama State? But to me, I think when you have celebrities who can come back and, and tie themselves to a university, whether it's what Chris Paul was doing with the sneakers, whatever, I, I think it's just really big just for the, the, the average alumni to say, hey, man, if, if, if Puff Daddy is going to give a million dollars to Howard and I'm an alumnus of Howard, how can I not donate a hundred dollars or not donate a thousand dollars? So it doesn't matter if you donate a million or you donate a hundred. It's just that you have to give back to the HBCUs. And we all care about them. We love them. We wear the T-shirts. But at the same time, you have to write a check, whether it's a big or small check. And uh, we want to, and so many people that I talk to that would say, and include myself, if not for Alabama State, then where would I be? I mean, I was a, a walk-on out of New Orleans. And so from there, listening to Coach Markham and all of the people at Alabama State that nourished me, helped me to make it to the NFL, have a great career, and, and then come back as a head coach. So and you, you have to say that, and you have to give back. But I think from a celebrity standpoint, yeah, two changes is a natural fit. He's right here in Atlanta, and so uh, he loves us. We love him. I mean, he's been on campus and stuff, so we have to definitely get that connection. But uh, I think every HBCU has so many people who have gone on to do so, such great things, and, and that's what makes it great to, to be a part of their legacy. Two more quick questions. I heard you say RPO. We want to yeah. see a lot of that this year. Yeah, I mean, look at the quarterbacks that we have on campus. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, we have a young freshman here out of Atlanta, the Quiet Let, uh, you know, out of Creekside, and, and, and done a lot, did a lot of those type of things. Of course, uh, Miles Crawley, our returning quarterback, uh, he's from Atlanta too, ironically. And then, of course, we have Demetrius Davis. So, I mean, that's the type of offense we want to have. We want to have it exciting, put put a lot of infrastructure to getting the, our wide receivers to get bigger and stronger guys. So, uh, I think with football, you have to stay on the attack. Um, still want to run the football, of course. That's a big part of it. But the SWAC is a scoring lead. I think every every team has improved themselves uh, with the, at the wide receiver position, and, and everybody wants to put points on the board. And I think you'd rather lose 48 to 46 than 7 to 3. You know what I'm saying? The fans at least feel like you have a chance next week. You know. <laughs> Tell me that story again. You told about playing in the Heritage Bowl and, and everybody that came through. To, to yeah, talk to so, program. I mean, um, I think just the, the connectivity of the coaches in that day. Because everybody, I mean, they competed. You know, Marino, Chasm, W.C. Gordon, all those guys. But uh, right before the game, you know, Coach Markham was like, hey, man, I'm going to have a couple guys coming in and talk to you. And it was, you know, Marino, Chasm. So he was like, hey, man, y'all guys representing the SWAC. You know, and, and told us about the history of the players. And there's two minute speech right before the game. Then it was Coach Eddie Robinson. Like, hey, you guys beat us this year. And, and now y'all can't let the conference down. So we felt like not only were we representing Alabama State, but we were also were representing the SWAC conference. And so, I mean, whenever guys would go outside the conference, I remember Southern University beating, you know, um, Georgia Tech in the, in the basketball game, the NCAA. I mean, I'm, we were running out the dorm excited. You know, it, it's Southern who we hate all year long, but you're playing against another school, then, and I think all of the HBCUs is like that, but especially the SWAC schools. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna fight each other, and we're gonna have some uh, some battles on Saturday night. But after that, man, we're we're pulling for each other. We're all in it together. What year was that? 
year was that? Uh, 1991. Guess, guess who the quarterback was for A&T? You should know. Exactly. <laughs> Comes full circle, doesn't it? Yeah, he left us. <laughs> right. Yeah, and back in the swag. Right. You guys, uh, you guys handled the Aggies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.